congratulations to, to Coach Houck in Montana. But, uh, um, I've said it before, i got tremendous respect for him. He's one of my good friends um, in the coaching profession, a guy that I've leaned on a little bit through the, my five years of being a head coach. So um, I've played here. This is my third time that I've been able to coach here, and it was as electric as it's ever been. And so um, couldn't be more excited for uh, Missoula and the, and, the, and the fan base, um, where they show up and, and get involved was, was pretty unique. And it caused us some issues at times tonight, for sure. Um, if you'd have told me going into this that we gave up 16 points in regulation and, and, and didn't win, I would have thought you were crazy. Um, I thought our kids, I thought we had a good plan defensively. Uh, we knew that their quarterback was, was going to be kind of where things operated through, quarterback run game his ability to create and buy time with his feet uh, made us nervous all week. We got pressure on him. We, we were able to get turned loose a little bit and, and stop the run game. Uh, just You can't settle for field goals as much as we did early in the game, and that was frustrating. Um, and, and, and take nothing away from, from Montana's defense. They were really good in the red zone, and uh, they, were, they were better than us offensively in the red zone. But you know, for us to kick three field goals, um, you know, if we could have turned a couple of those into touchdowns, uh, it could have been a different outcome. But uh, again, two two great programs playing and and uh, bittersweet. Matt, the play calls a two point play. Can you take us through that? Yeah, it's something that we practice. I mean, you know, most teams have you know two three two point plays. And again, trying trying a little misdirection, trying to to find ways to to be creative uh, on the two-point play because you know you need it. Something that we've not, they've never seen, we've never shown. Um, that's when you pull those things out, especially when you're on the road and, and, and you're in a hostile environment. You gotta, uh, you gotta have those plays ready to go. At one point you guys were out gaining them pretty defensively, but we're you know, still down on the scoreboard. What do you think was the biggest uh, struggle there as far as getting points in the fourth Well, I think there's two things. Uh, one, and I already commented on their, you know, the caliber of red zone defense that they were playing, but I don't have any stats in front of me, and I don't, you know, how many third and shorts turned into third and longs because of a false start, and that was frustrating. We, we, we talked all week that we wanted to be in third and short, third and manageable, because there was probably even a few of them today where, hey, if it's fourth and one, we, we might have gone for it, but all of a sudden when it's third and eight, um, you, you really, you yank the playbook right out of Coach Wall's, you know, play calling ability, you know, the play car of, the play card becomes obsolete. I mean, what was it, a third and 22 today? I mean, there are no plays. Uh, there are no calls. You gotta, all of a sudden now it becomes conservative and let's make sure we punt it and, 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 and don't turn it over and, and try to force the ball. And, um, you know, the crowd had a huge impact and, and, you know, they're stemming up front along with the, with the crowd noise. Uh, I think it impacted our guys. And this is something that we showed them all week long, uh, again, but at practice, you cannot emulate the stress and the pressure that these guys feel, you know, at game time. And um, FCS playoffs, teams on the road three straight weeks, usually wear out. It's proven to wear out. You guys feel like you bucked that trend? Of wearing out? Yeah. No, we didn't wear out. We just got, we got beat today. We didn't, we didn't wear out. You know, wearing out would have been, you know, when we were down, folding and, you know, giving in and patting each other on the back rather than trying to go find a way to win. It is. We miss tackles, and uh, they do a great job. I know Coach Houck is their uh, special teams coordinator, and uh, he does a great job. They're, they're, he's confident. They're confident. Uh, when you know you have a kid like that with that capabilities and talent back there, it's amazing how hard the other ten, kid pl ten kids play on that unit. And, uh, um, and again, like I said, if you told me we gave up 16 points in regulation and didn't win, I would have thought you were joking. How did you kids handle this week overall? Like champs, just like bison. What did you tell the team in the locker room after the game? Excuse me? What did you tell the team in the locker room? I haven't had a chance. You guys were, I guess, my priority tonight, so I have not had a chance to talk to the team. So I'm sure they're down there waiting for me right now. Coach, the defensive game plan, you mentioned trying to contain Montana's quarterback. What specifically did you do? You seemed like you had a cross step. Right? Well, I think we did some things on the perimeter. Uh, changed up how we played our defensive end. We mess charged him a handful of times. Um, we knew just from watching them that they had turned some people loose during the year. Uh, 
I think they've given up nearly 100 TFLs over the season and felt like we could take it, felt like we have kind of ascended in that position. Uh, struggled early at the D-line and, and have grown immensely uh, with, with Coach Gager and Coach Phelps and felt like that could be an advantage for us at times. And, and I thought it was. I thought we, we made him get off his get off his spot. We got to his toes, made him kind of scramble away from his arm at different times. And uh, I thought we had a, had a good game plan to, to keep him in check. We, we knew, you know, you go back and look at last week's game, you look at the Montana State game, um, when he's rolling and he's confident, and he had some of that early in the game, uh, but we were able to kind of, you know, reel things back in and keep them under control. Coach, I can't notice that it's one of the closest teams he's played on. Just your emotion now, your last game. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying season. to avoid that right now. You know, probably I'll, I'll, this is probably the one time I'll sit and talk to you guys as long as I can. Um, it's, it's, we got to, it's been a unique year in, in a positive way. Um, the word special, the word different comes out a lot. Um, we got a locker room full of champions in my mind. Um, the word love gets used a lot in our locker room and team room, so you can tell it's hard, but I'm excited for, for what's next. And, um, this NDSU is going to be in a good. They're in a good spot. Um, there's good infrastructure. There's the right people. They'll be the right people. Um, you know, and and everyone knows what the what the standard is. And I think we played to the standard. Um, I know our fan base has expectations, and you know, expectations are, are lousy. They're false. They don't they don't exist. Um, you know, when we were five and three, six and three, we said, what's the standard look like? And that's what we're going to try to play to. And I think we've. We did a good job of getting there. Um, do I wish we'd have won a couple more games? Hell yeah, but um, I'm not apologetic for the standard. This playoff run, not like anything we've seen from the past decade. No. Nope. Just kind of your thoughts on the, uh, your final thoughts on this uh, past uh, four games. You know, when we were after South Dakota State, or even after UND, probably um, kind of took a, a long, sat down, and, and kind of looked at myself, looked at what we need to do, and, and said, we're just going to do what we're good at, and let's, let's simplify game plan, let's, let's, let's practice and let's attack our process as well as we can, and let's mitigate any issues, and, and then let's not make a whole bunch of knee-jerk reactions, because that would have been easy to do when you're five, five and three or whatever, we were four and two at the time and, and, and got whipped. Um, we, we just, the secret's in the dirt, and we went back to work. Maybe that's sort of, farm kid from Iowa, that's the only thing I know how to do well. So, I appreciate it. Thank you, and uh, go Bison.